Let me introduce myself quickly. My name is Eman Hong. I'm a senior software engineer at Defri Hero. I maintain Remix Guy and a former editor library called Conform. And today I'm here to talk about constraint validation. First, uh, constraint validation is a browser mechanism for form validation. It was introduced in HTML5 and is now supported by all modern browsers. Let's say we're building a simple style form, and this is how the map looks like. Now, if we type Remix here and submit, what will happen? Well, the browsers block the form submission and tell us the email is invalid because the email type here is one of the validation attributes. This attribute lets define a constraint based on different use cases. For example, we can mark an input as required with the required attribute. We can also enforce a password policy using the mean length and pattern attribute. Now, I'm going to show you how we can uh, progressively enhance it using DOM APIs. The first step is to disable the default browser validation. Why? Let's take a look at the version flow. The top diagram shows how the browser works by default. When the form is submitted, the browsers write the form and fire a submit event only if the form is valid. There's no way for us to add custom logic to this process. Now in the bottom diagram, we're going to disable the default browser validation so the submit, submit event is fired immediately, and then we will implement the browser validation ourselves. Let's apply this to our SAR form example. First, we disable the default browser validation with this no file day attribute. Then we will implement it on the submit event handlers using the report validity method. We are also, uh, prevent, uh, we're also pre uh, preventing the, uh, the form from submitting uh, with the prevent default method. Now, if we click on the sign buttons, the error message is still displaying, but we have a more flexible validation flow. Next, we need to learn about the error interface. First, the, validation, uh, the error message displayed is defined by the validation message property. It can be overridden with the... Oh, okay. That's not good. <laughs> hey. OK, we're good. OK, yeah, it can be overridden with the set custom value method. Um, if we want to know more about the error, we can also check the validity property. This property represents the valid state of the input, uh, with each Boolean represent uh, the result of a different validation attribute. With this in mind, if we want to customize, how, uh, customize the error message, this is how the new validation flow looks. The top diagram shows the validation flow that we enhanced earlier. Now in the bottom diagram, we're going to customize the error message before we put in new errors. Now let's go back to the example and see how this works. Here we define a formal error function that derives a message based on the input element and the form data object. Then we loop over each input element and pass the result to the set custom value method. Inside this formal error function, we are simply checking both the name and the valid state of the input element. We are also comparing the password and the confirmed password field manually because there's no validation attribute that covers this use case. And now, if I click on the start button again, the error message is updated. The next thing we need to learn about is the invalid event. So when browser validation happens, an invalid event will be fired on each invalid input and trigger the error display like in the top diagrams. This gives us a chance to capture error states and customize how errors should be reported. But there's no valid event available. To get a, uh, we can't check when an invalid input becomes valid again. To get around this, we're going to reset the error state before synchronizing new errors. Now, we're going to go back to example and see how this works. First, we prepare an error state that map input name to error message. Then we synchronize the validation message on the invalid event handlers and cancel the error display with the PRN default method. For sure, we're also resetting the error state, as I mentioned. Now, we can display the error message anywhere we want, like this. Well, it's great to have kind validation in place even without JavaScript, but it doesn't mean we should skip server validation, right? Let me introduce you to the Conform Valid State Helper. This is a package for you to perform server validation by providing a valid state-like interface based on the validation attributes. It's about type inference acquisitions. It's also seal cape on the client as you need it only on the server. Now, I'm going to show you, uh, show you quickly how this works. First, we extract the constraints of each input and combine them into dictionary. Then we import this pass helper to pass the form data based on the constraint and the format error function. Now, if there's any error, we just send it back to client and synchronize it with the client error states. Well, 
Now, if I disable JavaScript of this form and submit it, our form will continue to work just fine. In the end, I want to say it's just the web. Once you learn the gist of this talk, you should be able to apply this solution anywhere, whether or not you're using Remix. Maybe next. If, you, uh, if you're interested in this topic, feel free to check out my project on GitHub or talk to me on Twitter. Thank you. <laughs> I guess I can just give it.